Dr. Harold Woody Neighbors is our next Charles Stuart Mott Endowed Professor of Public Health at Michigan State University's College of Human Medicine. He earned his Bachelor of Arts in Psychology from Haverford and a doctorate from, in Social Psychology from the University of Michigan. For the past 30 years, Dr. Neighbors has been a professor at the University of Michigan where he dedicated his career to the investigation of health behavior and mental health among black Americans. He has a long-standing interest in studying how ethnic differences in health and illness behavior affect major depression, diabetes, and oral health in difficult to reach population groups. His work promotes a personal empowerment perspective on coping with stress that emphasizes the ability of people, regardless of their racial identification or socioeconomic position, to draw upon psychological strengths and social assets to overcome personal and community barriers that denigrate mental health. Please welcome Woody Neighbors. In front of you is one of the Charles Stewart Mott Endowed Professors of Public Health. I have to admit, I have a few butterflies. I'm not nervous, just a few butterflies, because you're actually looking at a guy who once took 40 minutes to deliver a 20-minute presentation. <laughs> so my task today is modest. All I want to do is uh, get you to know me just a little bit, uh, hopefully make you laugh once or twice. Actually, I think I already did. Um, and give you an appreciation for what I want to do uh, here in Flint. So when I practiced this presentation, first time it came in at 12 and a half minutes, and I felt pretty good about that. I said, I think it's going to be pretty easy for me to shave two minutes off this talk. So I did it the second time, and it came in at 15 minutes. Definitely moving in the wrong direction. And as I practiced it a few more times, I realized that I was spending a lot of time on my first slide, thanking everyone who's made this possible. And in fact, as you look at this slide in front of you, uh, I could probably talk five, 10 minutes on each line and each person. Um, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, because I do want to get into the meat of my talk, and I hope uh, after the formal part of the program, I'll be able to get around and thank uh, everyone uh, personally. Um, I do want to just briefly mention uh, my community partners, and in fact, the community-based organization partners, uh, CBOP, that you heard Dr. Johnson refer to, uh, they are my guiding light as well. And I could go on and on and on about how they have helped introduce me to the Flint community. Uh, but again, I won't do that. I'll just say thank you, CBOP. Uh, I got a lot of good stories about how Jeff and I uh, hung out uh, during this little recruitment uh, dance we did. But see me after the talk, and I'll fill you in on that. And I do want to mention uh, by name my mother-in-law, Mrs. Bonnie Davis, who's right here. Uh, <laughs> I have the best mother-in-law in the world, and I got a bunch of stories about her. Uh, she's always got my back. Uh, she's wearing her um, NC State red. Uh, I just want to mention that my mother-in-law is the one that's directly responsible for giving me a deep, deep appreciation of what Extension is all about. Uh, she had an outstanding career as an extension agent in North Carolina, and I didn't know anything about extension uh, until I met my, uh, well, hoped to be wife. So we weren't even married at that point. Um, and also uh, gained a deep appreciation for 4-H. So I am very excited to now be part of the Michigan State community. And Jeff, I'm looking forward to hooking up with you at some point uh, to take uh, some of this programming throughout the state of Michigan. 
Um, I do want to make special mention of one particular person, my wife, Dr. Benita, neighbors, and I'll just say uh, without her support, uh, this would not have happened. Um, I remember telling her, you know, I think I'm going to move to Flint, and I wasn't sure how she's going to take that, but, uh, <laughs> you know. So uh, to stay on track, uh, I titled this presentation, No Stories, Just the Facts. Uh, the thing that always gets me in trouble um, is my tendency to elaborate and stray and get off track a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to try to stick just to the facts. And I do have uh, a fallback plan. I'm very happy that my wife is seated right in front of me, and we've worked out a couple of hand signals. <laughs> and if I start to get off track, she's going to, you know, go through those. So I think I can do this. So the most frequently asked questions that I get. Where does Woody come from? What in the world is man up, man down? And then there's question number three, which I'll leave you in suspense about that one. So this is one of my favorite pictures. Uh, this is the night that I signed on the dotted line uh, after having dinner with Jeff. Um, it's also a testimony to how those of us who are aging baby boomers should not ever listen to our children with respect to anything having to do with social media. Uh, my son told me about this great MSU app that I could download and get a helmet, and so I always do what my son tells me to do. <laughs> so I did it, and now I don't know how to get rid of my, you know, so. But I like the picture so much, I figured I'd just show it. So, very briefly, uh, my first name is Harold. My father's first name was Harold. My middle name is Woodruff. And Woodruff is my mother's maiden name, because back in the 50s, they weren't hyphenating. Um, so, I got the middle name of Woodruff. They couldn't call me Harold, because there was Harold 1, I'd be Harold 2. But they weren't comfortable calling me Woodruff all the time, so Woodruff became Woody. And now you know the story of where Woody comes from, and I'm actually very happy and honored to have two of the Woodruffs in the audience today. So now here's the Man Up, Man Down logo. In fact, one of the students, I, uh, one of the a new MSU students I'm working with right now the other day was telling me, no, it's not, it's not Man Up, Man Down, it's Man Up, Upside Down. And I'm like, no, it's not. But this logo uh, attracts a lot of curiosity. We use it at health fairs a lot because we're trying to gauge men in conversations about their health. And so it really attracts people. But the logo standing alone without me uh, being able to give a verbal explanation uh, doesn't really do justice to what we're trying to do. So my new uh, neighbor's research team uh, has been obsessing over a short and concise description of Man Up, Man Down. And I'm going to read that to you now. The Man Up, Man Down program encourages men to reach out when feeling stressed. Sometimes trying to man up results in a man feeling down. It is healthy and wise for men to talk to family, friends, the doctor, and to each other. If you feel something, say something. So that encapsulates what we're trying to do with the Man Up, Man Down program. And believe me, I could talk for a long time about where Man Up, Man Down came from, where we're trying to go, but unfortunately I can't do that today. But please see me after the program and I'll tell you all about Man Up, Man Down. And I'll tell you how we probably had a 45-minute conversation about whether we should say it's smart for men to talk or it's wise for men to talk. And this is the part of the conversation where my wife just goes crazy. How can you spend 45 minutes obsessing over the difference between smart and wise? Well, you know, when you're in academy, it's what you do. The problem I want to solve, very straightforward, but not so simple. I want to reduce and eventually eliminate racial and gender disparities in health in Flint. That's it. That's what I want to do. Men, particularly black men, live sicker and die younger. So a lot of times you hear me run around saying, you know, 4.5, 4.6. 
And people, what is he talking about now? 4.6, the number of years on average that women live longer than men. And that number goes up to six when we look at black men. I find those things unavoidable, and therefore I find it unacceptable. Why is this important? It's obvious. Too many men, black and white, are missing from daily life. We're missing way before our time. We have a lot to contribute. Uh, but if you're like me, you're sitting around that Thanksgiving dinner table, and year after year after year goes by, and you start noticing, as a man, you're in the minority. That's not right. Our lack of progress on this, I find very frustrating. And in fact, in my former life at a school down the road, I was primarily an applied social scientist, and I spent a lot of time uh, creating a foundation for what we call, an empirical foundation for what we call uh, racial and ethnic health disparities. It was description. 30 years look back, I had to ask myself, what had we done? And my answer was, I did a lot to describe the problem, but I don't think I did very much to try to eliminate the problem. I've come to Flint to try to make a difference. So I'm fond of saying the more things change, the more they stay the same. I got on tenure track down in Ann Arbor in 1985, so I like to show life expectancy by race and gender for 1985. And when I decided to reinvent my research portfolio, it was 2010. And these pictures look remarkably similar. The good news is everybody's living longer, but the bad news is that we're still seeing disparities. We need to fix that. So what's Man Up, Man Down in Flint going to be up to? Three areas of activity. Community-driven intervention research. Community outreach and engagement, and this is where my uh, CBOP colleagues come in. Mentorship and research education. So what are we doing? Just take a quick look at this diagram. This diagram represents the first uh, intervention pilot study that I did. It focused on the comorbidity of diabetes and periodontitis. The green box is where I'm going to play. That's the game I'm playing. I'm often uh, fond of saying, you know, I really love my doctor. He's a great guy. I just don't see him that much. You know, for those of us who are fortunate to actually have a PCP, we don't see them very much. So I know when I leave my doctor's office, it's going to be three, four months. And for sometimes it's even longer, but I won't go into that. Um, before I see him again. So in between visits, it's up to me. I need to learn how to behave myself, and I think a lot of us men need to step up and take responsibility for our health and illness behavior. So this was a study we affectionately call O-Buddy for Oral Health Buddy, and we developed an intervention that was based on the combination of social support and mobile health texting. Bottom line with O-Buddy was that flossing increased and Average blood sugar, three-month look back, A1C, decreased. Very intriguing and promising results. The thing that was really interesting about this study is that blood sugar decreased more for our black participants than our white participants. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what decreasing a disparity might look like if we could figure out how we did this, and how to take this to other interventions. And so the, the analyses are ongoing right now, and we're very happy about the O-Buddy study. So what am I going to be doing in Flint? My newly funded NIH study is called Man Up. There's no man down, just Man Up. And that's, that stands for the Men Are Now United program. Uh, it's an R21, and all I mean by that is that it's a two-year uh, study. It's going to start in July of 2016. The intervention will be a combination of group dialogue, exercise, a little bit of friendly competition. This is a study of all men. Um, and we think if we in introduce a little bit of competition, uh, we'll get some uh, benefit on that. So we'll see what happens. And we're going to be uh, you know, reporting out average levels of different biomarkers to show the, the men how they're doing over time. 
Uh, we're also going to follow the men up uh, after the intervention in what we call buddy pairs. We're borrowing that directly uh, from the, the first study. And again, we'll use mobile health and, and texting. I'm very happy uh, to say that uh, this study is a uh, collaboration with uh, University of Michigan Flint uh, SHIPS, as we call it, uh, School of Health Professions and Sciences. So the relationships are having, happening. Second lane that uh, Man Up, Man Down is going to travel in, so I just got the uh, signal to speed it up a little bit, uh, community engagement. So thank you. I feel, I feel like, you know, the guy's in the batter's box and he's looking down uh, at the third baseline and the third base coach is, you know, giving him signals. It's time to bunt. So um, very, very briefly, uh, the community engagement piece of Man to Man Down uh, is the Flint Oral Health Fair. This is another MSU CBOP uh, collaborative, and it's going to happen October uh, 1st, 2016. We're going to do screening, referral, education, and follow-up. Uh, you know, I'm, I like health fairs, but I think health fairs can actually do better. We really need to do more to track participants over time to find out uh, if the health fair had any impact on uh, the recommendations that we made during the fair. So we're going to try to do that. Uh, we have great traction, good uh, partners, uh, District Dental Society is on board, Mott Community College is on board in a big way, the dental assisting program, the dental hygiene program, and the nursing program. Uh, I'm very, very excited about this uh, community outreach event. Third lane that I love to drive in, and sometimes I love this lane more than any other lane, and that's my commitment to mentoring the next generation of research scientists. I love working with students. Um, I had a tr training grant at, in Ann Arbor for 16 years. I've handed that off to a very capable uh, colleague and friend, uh, Dr. Chatter, sitting over there. And I'd really like to recreate a different version of that experience here in Flint. Uh, so right now I do have a new group of students I'm working with, uh, affectionately known as my energy team. This is a picture of us. Uh, standing out in front of this building, and I won't introduce everyone uh, by name, but I will say that it's a really good mixture of folks from U of M Ann Arbor, U of M Flint, Michigan State, and a couple of folks uh, are going to be leaving me soon because they're starting their uh, graduate work in public health, um, two of them going to Emory uh, University. Two members of the team were missing when we took this picture. Both of those uh, young men are... Uh, medical students here at Michigan State University. So I'm very excited about uh, figuring out how to combine public health with medicine with uh, medical students. Question number three is why? So if you ask my son, who's uh, in this picture, this was at Camden Yards, uh, he would probably say something like, uh, yeah, you know, Pops finally saw the light and came over and joined the winning team. He's a true Spartan, having graduated from here, double E in 2002. Uh, but this question comes to me in two slightly different versions. My Michigan colleagues, you know, tend to look at me with a little puzzlement and say, like, why would you leave U of M? You know, and this, I don't think they mean that in an arrogant way, but I think they really want to know, hey, you're a full professor. I mean, everything's in place. Uh, why are you taking off? My Spartan family is equally curious. Why did, why did you leave? Just want to know. Two slightly different questions, but I answer them both the same way. There were never any push factors involved in this decision. It is a fact that I was very uh, comfortable at U of M. And if you ask my wife, she probably would say, you know, you were probably a little too comfortable. I think one of the big reasons she was behind this is, you know, when you've been married for 40 years, I think your spouse probably knows you better than you know yourself. And she would always tell me, you just get so excited every time you talk about this opportunity in Flint. So I'm taking that information back from her. And I think that's probably what was going on. There was nothing pushing me out of U of M. So the way I answer this question is I say, uh, I didn't leave U of M. I was drawn to Michigan State Flint. So this is me in front of my new uh, lodging, the very famous Durant building uh, right down the way. And this is where you can find me uh, Sunday through Thursday. 
And then Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening, uh, I drive down to Celine where I can spend time with my wife, my mother-in-law. And then Sunday evening, I make the trek back up. I'm very happy at the Durant. I'm very happy on the third floor of this building. And uh, I love it here. I'm very excited. Looking forward to working with so many of you. And I just want to say thank you. By the way, um, there's no truth to the rumor that you've heard that I'm going to wear this medal to work. I just want to... <laughs>